This is a special message out there for all the Knucklehead fans out there. We take pride in protecting our guests and protecting our content. We just want to address the fact that this episode was shot two days before the tragic passing of Kobe Bryant. We will not be discussing or talking with Shaq about anything pertaining to the tragic loss of Kobe Bryant. We would like to send our sincerest condolences and prayers out to the Bryant family and all families impacted by this tragedy. All right, man, we on location. ATL, shawty. We got the blackest one with me. And this time we got the biggest, baddest, the most dominant ever. Our big dog, our OG, Shaquille. I mean, excuse me, Dr. Shaquille O'Neal. What's up, boys? Nice to be here with y'all. Hey, man, this is a privilege, boy. We got the baddest man ever pulling down backboards on you. Check us out. Well, can we toast? Yeah, we can toast. Yeah, with the big dog. I just want to say I'm proud of y'all. And did you realize when we was playing, I never messed with y'all? You noticed that, right? I no, never you, thought... gave, you gave us a pass. You told I, us. I did, yeah. And I never I never messed with you. I told you, do what you do. I never tried to block your shots. You know yeah. that, right? I tried to tip dunk all the free throw line one time. You said, I like you. Don't ever do that again, because <laughs> yeah, I can don't. hurt your whole face. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, don't ever try me. Like, he like, I ain't expect you to try that. He was like, don't ever do that again. I remember again. I blocked your shot, and you was like, oh, do it stop again. It. You ain't blocked my shot. You fine. He was like, do it again. So I came to try the weak side, block your shot again. You threw it to Robert Orr. He dunked the shit out that motherfucker. <laughs> he was like, you set me up. <laughs> you know what happened to me a couple of weeks ago that was strange? Keith Claus pulled me inside. You told me wow. about this when we was in the He apologized. I said, what you apologizing for? He said, man, I just want to say, I'm just like, bro, that was 20 years ago, but he's, shout out to Keith Clark. Like, shout he, out. Like, he didn't have to do that, because I don't, I don't know what people thought it was with me on the basketball court, but whenever I stepped off the basketball court, y'all know I wasn't that type of fella. Exactly. He pulled me to the side, I was like, because like, he was like, hey, I need to holler at you. I was like, I'm going to have to knock him out. <laughs> and I'm going to have to knock him out. He was like, man, I just want to apologize. He's like a, a different guy. Nah, he yeah. is. I, yeah, I, he's, he's really he really turned, different. He turns himself yeah. around yeah, he to what he so, was. <laughs> shout out to Keith Cross. Straight up. Right. Where your boy at? Ala Kawande. Where he at? Olu. <laughs> Whatever. Ala Kawande. Man, last Ala <laughs> The last thing I heard about Oluwat was Keon Dooling was telling me that he was back overseas, I want to say in London, like in- Doing what? I don't know, he said he was doing something, doing well, you know, he Oluwat came from money, man. He came over here on some Prince of yeah. King type joint. Oh, like so I, he was already rich. Bro, oh, yeah, you never knew his story? Rich. No, yeah. he was Prince of King. He for real, like, oh, you gotta go to America and get an education. That was Prince of He Zamunda. did the whole globe <laughs> thing, like, now nah, I wanna go where the water and the beaches, that's why he went to Pacific. They found oh. him on campus just walking around, bro. He was just walking around, coach yeah. said, bring your ass in here, and then next thing oh, you know, the one money. pick. Yeah, he Straight really up. hooping oh. like that. So he back so over he, there doing. Yeah. You know what? He told me that one day in the game. Yeah, he was like, he, he told me that in the game. Like he said, Shaq, you he think he wound up being a number one yeah, pick? Yeah, yeah. He, he said, Shaq, you think you're the man, but I got more money than you. I was like, I don't think so, bro. His parents, like, I don't, got, like, I don't know like I don't that, know that but got. like when he, he, that was always his thing. When he first got here, he would just be like, really, like, I'm Yeah, he was driving Aston Martins and all that stuff. Rookie deal. Rookie deal. Straight out the gate. The first question we always ask everybody. When they come on the show, when you first got to the league, who was the first person to bust your ass? Well, a lot of people bust my ass, but I take pride in playing set 19 years and only being dunked on three times. So the first person to dunk on me was Derek Coleman. Derek Coleman. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, drop step with the left hand. Yeah. Like a lot of people bust my ass. Ewan bust my ass, uh, Robinson bust my ass, Akeem bust my ass, like all the big guys bust my ass. And then a couple of sorry guys bust my ass. Like, I couldn't stop Big Country for some reason. Big Brian country. Reeves. I couldn't stop him at all. I don't know what it was. He used to, he used to eat my ass up yeah, every game. Hands, yeah. Every game. Him and who and Michael Doliak. You remember Doliak? Doliak. Yeah, yeah. Doliak. I remember, I remember the first time when we came back from L.A. to play Orlando, Doliak hit me for like 25. <laughs> so, but the first person to dunk on me was Derek Coleman. The second person, Tim Perry, got me baseline. Wow. And then uh Philly. Yeah, and then uh, Michael Jordan. See, I've been I got about thirty dunk buys. I got about seven like not paying attention, tip dunks, yeah. but dunk on chest to chest, balls to balls. I <laughs> only got uh, <laughs> uh one 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 or two of them. 
and I take pride in that. So coming out, like, I know you traveled a lot and so forth. On what made you choose the high school you chose? Like, what made you choose Cole? I didn't choose it. Uh, you know, when you when you go to you go from military base to military base, and you live on a base, you have to go to that school. Yeah. Uh, when when I first got to San Antonio, everybody was. It ain't gonna be no competition at that school. You playing against guys five one, five two. You need to go to a bigger school. I tried that, but my father told me something very important. He said, "When you good, they'll come to you." They gonna find you. That's what my so, mom told me. So when I got to San Antonio, we had a a, a gym and had one side with bleachers, like, but not really bleachers, like a seat, a seat, a seat, <laughs> right. and then the wall. First year we went thirty five and one. Second year we went thirty six and zero, but I, I noticed that as we start playing and everybody started hearing about me, the gym started getting packed, packed, packed filling up, bring more seats. Packed. Yeah, and then they had to bring more seats, and then you know people be sitting outside, and they had to get like a jumbo tram and like put the things outside. And I was like, you know, my pops is right, and then all the stuff they just say, well, he ain't playing against nobody, so. Even though I was playing at the school, I used to go to the gym and play with the grown men. Grown men. And I used to have to walk through the hood, the Spanish hood, fight, mm-hmm. and play on the east side and then come back. But once my name hit the paper, the little Spanish homies, they was like, you know what? We messed with your homes. Go ahead. And yeah. I had to pass the walk. They was coming like, to the games. Yeah, they was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who won yeah. home? Yeah, they was, like, they was like, you know what? Me llamo El Padrino uh, Negro. We like you, homes. Go ahead. So, like, I had to pass. Shout out to the Ramos boys, because I used to have to fight them boys every day in San Antonio. Ramos boys. Yep. I know you chose LSU. Was it any possibility anybody else could have got you? I didn't like people telling me stuff that sounded too good, because <laughs> I, I never heard that before. Yeah. So, freshman like a lot sophomore, of I wasn't that good, right? Junior year, okay. Senior year, now I'm starting to make a name for myself. So now they was treating me like Jordan. I was like, I am, I'm good, but I'm not that good yet. So I went to North Carolina. Rick Fox showed me around. It was too. It, let me say this without being disrespectful. It, it wasn't. It wasn't hood enough for me. It yeah. was too. Chapel Hill. It, yes, it was too. Hey, hey, sorry, <laughs> I don't. I don't like that. So I went to North Carolina State. Jim Valvano. Actually, it was a guy at North Carolina State. His name was Charles Shackelford. I remember him. I took his whole shit. Big fella. He was Shaq first. So yeah. like, I took his whole thing. So I'm like, I'm not gonna play next to him. Can't be too Shaq. So I didn't want to go there. I went to Illinois, Nick and Kendall Gill, they showed me a good time, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was too cold, I'm like, it's too cold up there. Right and up. then, uh, where else I go? I went to UNLV, and it was too scary. It was just like too fast, they, they was taking me out, and clubs yeah. and this, and then when I went to LSU, I was like, uh, this is the place I wanna be. It, it was close to home. Y'all know what type of woman I like. Yeah. All of them sitting right there, <laughs> and they actually, and they actually, and they actually set me up. So like they put me in the middle of a football game. We was winning, and then the lights went off, and it's like Baton Rouge. If you want the gentleman from San Antonio, Texas, Shaquille O'Neal to come to LSU, make some noise. So they put the oh. lights back on me. All the girls are looking at me. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, this one so. I'm going to LSU. Yeah, so I, I went to LSU. Plus, when I was 13, Dale Brown offered me a scholarship. Because at 13, I was 6'9", couldn't play, couldn't dunk. So he's like, you know what, I believe in you. I'm going to give you a scholarship. So that's why I, um, I, um, I chose LSU. When you got to LSU, it's a player that's to this day right now, he's playing basketball. and it's, It was Chris Jackson and now it's Abdul Raouf. He was the best player I've ever seen in my life. Boy. And, and, this was the, and this was the same conversation I was having with my son the other day. I said, me and you are similar. What I mean by that is, our, our basketball career is just peaks and valleys. Started off not so good, became pretty good. Now you go to high school, you're not so good. Senior year, you win the state championship. Now you go to college, you're not really playing. You gotta figure that out. Yeah. So I was the man in high school, but when I got to LSU, I didn't get no playing time, and I understood why. Yeah. Stanley used to kill me every day, every day. Chris Jackson was the man, so I just had to figure it out. The day I said, F this stuff, I'm F- gonna be the man. FTS, I'm gonna be the man. This that's team. the day I, I start flourishing. So a lot of times when you see somebody that's above you, and then you strike them, and you see their blood flow, you realize that they're human also. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like Stan used to kill me all day, but one day, cause see a lot of people ain't know I had handles, right? Yeah. So one day, Chris missed, I take it off the break. All the guards are cover. I go coast to coast, Stanley running side by side, and I, Dominique double pumped that thing on his ass. <laughs> and everybody was going crazy, and I was like, oh, okay. 
He can't run yeah, with me. Yeah, he can't run. Yeah, he he's a human. So yeah, you know, once move. I yeah, he don't want to move. So once I figured that out, then it was uh, um, easy for me. So you know, I, I always try to you know tell my son the same thing. But Chris, he's Mahmoud Abdul-Rauf. I don't want to disrespect him, but yeah. yeah. And uh, like he was the first guard because you know because you know big guys like to post in the middle while y'all shooting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's the first guy that when he didn't throw it to me, I couldn't get mad because he always made it. He always made it. <laughs> he always right. made it. I was like, damn. So he was, yeah, he was he was cold. So you you go to LSU and you have a uh, you build this hype and you become the next best thing and you get drafted by. Orlando Magic. Did you think City it was a possibility? I know they had the number one pick, but did you think it was a possibility that they wouldn't pick you and you would go somewhere else? I didn't care. I think it's safe to say I'm the only guy. Did you guys have to try out? Yes. Yeah. I didn't have to try out. I told him I'm not trying out. Mm. Because in my mind, I knew that Alonzo was better than me defensively. And Christian Leighton had all the stuff that they make you do at the bullshit camps. Yeah. <laughs> right. All that, you know, all, all that stuff, all that stuff that don't mean nothing once yeah. you get in the game. So I told him, I said, look, I ain't trying out for nobody. I know I'm one, two, or three. Whoever picked me, I'm going to work. Because my motivation was this. As soon as I get this check, we going up up wherever to the gated community, I'm going to say, mama, pick one. Yeah, there ain't gonna be no mortgages. There ain't gonna be no down payments. Paying for all that. So that that I'm 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 gonna handle that first. So when I got to Orlando, we went up to uh, Lake Mary, and mm-hmm. I did just that. Yeah. I said, pick one. She said, Oh, I think this is good for you. I said, This ain't for me. This is for you. So I don't care where I went. Yeah. I'm taking care of my mama house first, and ain't nobody gonna take that away from yeah. me. So that was my motivation when I first got in. I thought about it, but that's why, like, if you look at the draft and they said Shaq is the first pick, I was like, who, me? Because there was a bunch of chatter that, you know, they were going to get Layton or get Alonzo, but it didn't matter to me because yeah. I already knew what I was going to do. That that year, they created the dream team, and everybody and their mama expected you to be on Aronis. that dream team, yeah. team, but you had Christian Leitner who just had a great career at Duke. And they chose Cricket Reggie. Tell, tell me what you thought about that whole situation of you not getting the opportunity to play with, with Mike and Magic and Bird on that dream team. See, they had a whole bunch of awards they was giving out. He was winning some in college. I was winning some. I, don't, I think I won player of the year. Yeah, I'm not sure. But I don't get mad. I get even. Yeah. Because my whole life, especially as a youngster, you ain't that good. Now I got to show you. Yeah. So it's just – it's just the same thing that I, that I, I, I was already used to. So I'm kind of glad I didn't go, because I think if I would have went, it would have made me a little cuter coming in. <laughs> so up. the fact that I didn't go, uh, Magic, remember Magic used to have that run every yeah. morning? Mm-hmm. I was there every morning. Every morning, 10 o'clock, running. Just uh-huh. learning the game, running, me and Magic on the break. So I knew when I got to the league, I was gonna be in tip top shape, and you I was gonna be ready. ready, and I was gonna let the world know my name. So I, didn't, I, was, I was upset, but I don't get mad. I get even. So talk about once you once you got drafted, right? Like you came through the door, and literally ever since you've probably been the most. I mean, obviously, you, in my opinion, most dominant force in the league ever. But like, I want to talk about the endorsements since day one. Like, have you ever spent any of your NBA contracts, or has it been all just been? Yeah, endorsement money like, because like right called, now, even now, you still running away. Like you know how some people be like, oh, to I answer your question, it's called that. marriage, divorce, and children. Oh, so hell yeah, I spent some of that money. I oh, spent, okay, I spent a lot of it. <laughs> so when I was in college, I failed marketing class because I used to sit around and dream. I said, shit, Mike got some. He got the jump, man. Let me go and create the dunk, man. Yeah. Right. So I already already had it in college, and and in my mind I was like, if I can get just just get onto that other side, I'm gonna try to get a shoe, t-shirts, jackets, all that stuff. So in marketing class, I uh, the guy said, all right, present us something that could be sold in the future. So I came with Shaq shirts, Shaq underwear, Shaq towels, Shaq everything, and the guy embarrassed me in class. He said, Ah, oh, see, you put a lot into this, Mr. O'Neill. But uh, this is not good enough. And I said, why? He said, if you look at the climate of the NBA, big guys don't sell. And he made a good point. I was like, damn, big guys don't sell. At that time, it was only Magic and uh, Bird doing commercials. Right. Mm-hmm. So I went back. I was like, damn, I ain't going to never get my own shoe. I ain't going to never get nothing. I'm going to be like be like all these other big guys. And as I'm sitting in my room chilling, this dumbass dog kept coming on TV. Spuds McKenzie. 
<laughs> he had everything. So then I was like, "This that's the stupidest commercial ever. Then I go to the store. He got cups. Everything. He got hats. <laughs> I go to another store. He So he got L, like he got LSU. But so I go back. And I'm thinking, like, why do they like this dog? And they like the dog because everything he did was funny. So I said, okay, if I ever get commercials, I'm a funny guy. I just got to make people laugh. Because my secret is not to say you the product, but make you remember the product. You know, like this right here. It'll be us fighting over the drinks, and then all of us will fall out the window. That should have go viral, right? <laughs> be like, Yo, what was they fighting over? They was fighting over Hennessy. See? Hennessy, you and hear that? And that's how you do it. It'd be said, like, man, look, somehow I'm fighting, we yeah, fall out the yeah, window. Yeah, yeah, you know, just fought. So things like that. So like I try to, I try to create all my own commercials, and I try, I try not to get involved or invest in a product that I don't believe in. See, like a lot of people think these things are endorsement, but a lot of companies I'm involved with, I own, I own, I own a piece of. Well, I gotta ask you one thing. Can you introduce me to the general? Cause insurance high is a motherfucker and I need. You know why I message the general? See like people are like, oh, you just taking it. Like if you look at me from the outside and you don't know me, you just think I'm doing a lot of these things for money. When I was in college, everybody had a car but me. Chris had a car, Stan had a car. And I don't know how they got their car, that ain't the point. But yeah. I'm gonna do my shit the right way. Yeah. Ain't nobody gonna give me nothing. So I see this Ford Bronco 2 for 4,900. Hey, Dad, I need a thousand. Hey, I need a thousand. So I finally get 5,000. It was Burgundy. Get it. Go to the guy and say, hey, man, I've been wanting this car. He said, Shaq, yeah, I'll move the seat back for you. So he said, uh, before, you, before I give you the keys, you need some insurance. I'm like, the fuck is insurance? Yeah. <laughs> What's insurance? So I went to all the other insurance, 120 a month, 30 a month. I'm like, damn, I'm gonna either have to go get my money back or I just can't get this car. So then the last place I went by was the general. The general. My insurance was $19 a month, full coverage. Not the full, full coverage, but enough, you know, crash, all, all that stuff. So that's why I mess with the general, because before I was the character known as Shaq, they took care of me. That's why I'm with the general. I'm with- That's uh, dope, I'm grew with, up on the general. Yeah, I'm with <laughs> Gold Bond, because we as black people, everybody need lotion. Yeah. You guys know that icy hot work. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, Zell's Jury, I like bling. Uh, Forto, little coffee shots give give you energy. I actually ring, got one of those. Yeah, ring, uh, affordable affordable uh, security. This, this yeah. is my first time not, not living like a spoiled brat. What I mean by that, I'm living out amongst the people. So I call these people, hey man, this shack, let me get the security company. So the dude come by. 10,000 square foot house, 30 acres. Also, be about 60,000. I'm not paying that. Because the older we get, we got to be smarter with the money. Yeah, you understand? Yeah. I'm not doing that. Call another guy. He said 30,000. So I go to Best Buy just to get some TVs, and I see this little ring camera, and I get it. I just hooked it up myself. I didn't even know yeah. if it worked. I'm in China. A fly go by the house, and the thing hits me. I'm like, damn, this shit work. <laughs> right. So when I came back, I just got the whole house of ring. So when I went to CES and met with the owner, I said, listen, you in Best Buy, you're doing a good job, but my people don't know about what you're doing here. He's like, what do you mean? I said, let me invest in the company. Let me do some commercials. Let me help get the word out. And he sold the company to Amazon for a lot of money. So a lot of times I like to, you know, just use myself to, Build, build stuff up. Back in the day uh, of your era, your era before our era, they used to tell NBA players if you did too much outside of the game, it's like you're not focusing on the game. Or if I'm doing too many commercials or he don't care about the game or he don't care about winning or so forth. At some point, did that discourage you where you slowed down a little bit before only, you won the championship and only, then got back to it? It only later? slowed me down in 2000 because I promised Phil I wouldn't do it. Yeah. So now that I'm not doing, I did one or two commercials, but now that I was slowing down and I was winning, I was like, okay, this must be the way. So second time, slow down, third mm -hmm. time, slow down. But before that, no, I'm not gonna slow down. And the reason is we don't come from a lot. Yeah. So when we, when we get the opportunity, the correct opportunity to get a lot, you always have to take advantage of it. Take advantage that. of it. Like people, oh, you did Kazam, For, forget Kazam, that's seven million. Yeah. <laughs> Blue chips, that's three million. I don't, yeah. I don't, that's, I'm not no movie star, I, I'm sport, not trying man. to, yeah, I ain't trying to get, I ain't trying to do all that. It's an opportunity, like, you know, we all from the hood. We all, we used to watch people on TV, now people get to watch us on TV. Yeah. So, 
you know, a lot of times we get too caught up in what other people say about what we're doing. But I'm going to always take advantage of the correct opportunity. Because where we come from, there's two opportunities. There's the correct opportunity <laughs> and, and, the and, the, and the wrong opportunity. So as long as we take advantage of the right opportunities, I don't really care about the outcome. Yeah. Speaking of that, so when you when you got drafted, I know you got you took mom and got to the crib. What did you get? The king of toys. Yeah, you know I like my toys. <laughs> I always tell people the story, and it's a true story. So, first money I got, even before I got drafted, was a card signing deal. Right, it was yeah, a million card dollars. deal. Oh, it wasn't no Over million for us, though. Excuse me, it, it was, was a million, a couple so, thousand, something real light. So I said, I gotta go get the black on black, five hundred. Sitting, sitting on them 19 inch hammers. Just two doors. Yeah, two, no, no, four door. Oh, okay. Four door. 150. And like I had no negotiating skills. I go into how much? 150. <laughs> <laughs> Boss. Move the seat back a couple inches. Call me. <laughs> Roll around the hood. What's part? Oh, man, you might, you gonna be the number one? I don't know, dog, whatever. Boom, I get home. My dad's like, that's night. Nice. Where's mine at? Now, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, so I know a million minus 150 shit. I got 850 left. Right. Pop in, pops, we go. He get the same joint I get. Black on black. Uh, we get the little German player say Shaq's dad in the front of that thing. So, so we rolling. We get home. My mom, where's mine at? She don't want the big one. She want the little one. So I got 700 left. Hers cost 100. I got 600 left. So after I drop him off, I drop it off. You know I got to get that boom, 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 boom. <laughs> you know I got to get that. I went to the jewelry shop. I bought some uh, Allen Iversons. Alan Iverson. I bought, a, I bought a Dookie rope chain. I bought a nugget chain. I bought a two finger ring. I had two. Uh, I got a, a high rise from San Antonio. Paid that off for the year. So like the next couple of days, the, the bank manager called me. He said, "Shaq, I need you to come to the bank." And when I came to the bank, he said, uh, "Look, man, I don't want you to be like everybody else." And he showed me. And I was like, "Yeah, I did this. I did this. I did this." And I was like, "Who the fuck is Fika?" <laughs> Fika had took like like three hundred thousand. Like no, I don't I don't know Fika. You you know you trying to set me up. So no man, Fika is, is is the you know the money that they that the government takes out. So I I had no I, I didn't know nothing about that. You know the government. You no, tax I didn't you know nothing know, about you know. none of that. So I was like, so after that I was like, you know what, I got to start being smart. I really do have to start being smart. So then I, I went. I had my guy bring me the five top financial advisors. And I remember reading in Kareem's book, because my, my dad was the type that whenever an athlete did something crazy, I would get in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. Worst ass woman of my life was when Len Bias died. Mm. My father came in the house and went crazy. I ever see you messing around with coke, I'ma kill you. And I was like, I drink Pepsi, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, was 13, no, I was 13. Like, he, was, he was going, he was crying. Yeah. Like it was his son. He was like, sit down and watch this. So that's why I never did drugs. That's why I never drink. Mm -hmm. like, if, I, if I get called, my father gonna kill me. Yeah. So we, we interviewed the top five people, and it was one guy. I was like, hey, I can do this. I can do. It. I was like, I like him. All as a matter of fact, he used to he used to manage Easy E's money. So that's why mm. I, that's why I chose. You know Lester, right? Yeah. You know Le my, my Lester. You no, you probably don't know Lester, but he's a little little, little little short white guy, and he was he was cool. All the other guys, oh, I can do this. I can do that. I don't like people that talk fast. Yeah, I don't. That fast talk, yeah, boy. You win rookie of the year and you have successful years at Orlando, but it seemed like you missing a piece to kind of get over that edge. You do a movie called Blue Chips. You get that. Uh, you get the opportunity to, to meet Anthony Hardaway before he's ever played an NBA game. I'm it's, the type that I don't care about no other players. Yeah, I don't even look at them. I know what I got to do. I know the money I'm gonna get. Never knew who Penny Hardaway was because exactly. I'm I'm doing what I'm doing. So we playing and they keep putting us on the same team. I'm like, damn this. I'm like, man, this actor he cold. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, he like I'm telling like I would run and like every, every time I do like this, it'd be I'm like he cold. And then finally somebody said, man, that's Penny Hardaway, man. I said, like, who the fuck is Penny Hardaway? He said, man, he probably gonna be the third pick because I knew we had the first pick, but. Behind closed doors, D. Scott always telling me, man, this your team, you gotta take over. See, I've never been the guy to come in the office and say, do this, do that. Yeah. Eventually, I had to become that to get my way. He said, man, you gotta do it, you gotta do it. So after playing with him all summer, I said, let me try this out. So I went to the office, John Gabriel, I said, John, mm -hmm. I the draft you. is coming up. Scott Skiles was cool. 
what I'm envisioning the next Magic and Kareem. It's a guy named Penny Hardaway. I've been with him all summer. If you don't draft him, I'm going to be looking to do something else when my deal is up. And I walked away, but I was scared when I said I was a like, <laughs> 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 I was terrified. So then uh, I'm watching the drive at the crib, me and D. Scott, and they pick C. Webb. Yeah. I tear my house up, break a TV. Oh, they disrespected me. Now I got to go, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> and then I calm down, and then they made the trade. They made the trade. I was trade. like, damn. That's cool. Yeah, this works. Yeah. And then we had a good year. And then, of course, we lose, and I'm watching the Bulls. Horace Grant doesn't like being in Chicago no more. Hey, John, give me Horace Grant now, or I'm going to think about doing something else by the time I deal up. Yeah. Did you call him on the yeah, Nino, though? Oh, yeah, you know I did. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, make sure you call him on Horace. the Nino. Now we was on our way, and we made it to the finals, and it was my fault that we lost. Because I knew we could beat Mike, because I wasn't scared anymore. I said on TNT the other day, I was scared, but after I saw he was human, and then I'm not guarding him anyway, so he's going to get his anyway. He gonna get his, but we gotta slow the other guy. And these big bums that's guarding me, I'm just gonna do what I do. And I gotta, they gonna start hacking shacking. I gotta knock him down. So I knew we could beat him. And then when we beat him, we had like 10 days off. Me and D Scott was wilding. Yeah. Heroes, <laughs> uh, downtown Orlando. Yeah. Yeah, private jets to Miami, all that. <laughs> and then when we, because we beat Houston that year. You know, yeah. King would get his, I get mine, but it wasn't no, you know. Uh-huh. And then so, so we was like, man, we I I got him. He gonna he gonna put up his numbers, but I'm he gonna have to guard me too. And then in the finals, he was just a different beast. I was like, damn, this is a different Akeem right here. <laughs> Let me ask you this: you chose you chose them to make the big move on getting Penny to see the success that Penny was getting and how he was playing. Like, how proud are you of him of that to be like, man, I chose. I chose, I seen that in him, that he can be something. No, it was it was great. And that's why I always tell the youngsters, no matter what, you gotta stick together. Cause we let them break us up. Yeah. Whoever they may be. But it was always, oh, it's hit Penny's team, it's Shaq's. It was always yeah. that little stupid stuff, right? Right. So then when Penny got it, uh, wanted to get some new money, which was more than mine, I was like, go ahead, take care of him. Like I still for him, cause I, I understand the game. Yeah. If a BMW costs one fifteen, what you think a Benz gonna cost? Mm-hmm. So I was like, pay him, cause my shit coming up right out the heads, and you gonna have to pay me too. So I was like, hey, take care of him. So I took off for him. When it came time for me to get mine, nobody stood up for me. Mm. Yeah. I was like, oh okay, all right. Ain't that bad, yeah, bitch? Okay. Yeah. And then you know, I felt I felt the change a little bit, and I was already in L.A. all summer anyway. I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna do something different. And it turned out to be the best decision of my life. To make the decision to yeah. go to LA. Yeah. So when you, you get to LA and you, you have all this talent and you uh you trying to put it together but the first couple of years you just didn't get over that hump, like how did you feel? Like 'cause we all were too happy. You remember how LA was? Yeah. Monday improv, Tuesday comedy store, yeah. Wednesday Georgia's, Thursday uh uh the gate. Across the street, the yeah, the, the gate, gate. Lost Palmas. yeah, Lost Palmas, <laughs> right? <laughs> Sunday, Century City. It was just, it was just too much going on, and that's crazy. We just didn't focus, and then it got to the point where everybody started pointing at me. Yeah, Shaq doing that, Shaq doing that. So I was like, okay, let me, let me, let me use my powers again. This coach ain't gonna work. This coach ain't gonna work. Bring me Phil Jackson. We don't know. Bring me Phil Jackson, man. Or oh, when my deal out, we looking to do something else. Yeah. So they bring in Phil. Phil have a conversation. Phil said, "It's your fault." So you, I, I watch you, but you don't, you don't go to the next step. I yeah. said, "What do you mean by that?" He said, "Only thing Michael did was play. Do his thing and play. So I don't mind you doing your thing and play, but Michael don't do this and do that." And he said, "If you guarantee me that you just do what Michael used to do, you're gonna." not only get MVP and win. So I said, all right, cool, and I did it, and it worked. Yeah. So I, I just got tired of hearing it was my fault. And then I always wanted to be that guy that people said was really good. Yeah. I don't want to be the guy that, oh, he did this, he did that, but I never wanted to have a butt bombing in. So it was just at that time. And then Kobe was coming into his, his killer. We were very tough to beat. 
talk about that that three year stretch though. How how that was? Cause I like you say we was the little brothers. We was right there in L A. watching this whole thing, watching y'all dominate. Regardless, like you say, regardless of whatever the storyline was outside the game, when y'all got on the court, it was pure dominance. Like how was that being a part of that feel? Like you had to go in every game knowing. Uh, yeah, this just it felt good because you, you know how this come from where we come from when they beat us up, beat us up, mm-hmm. beat us up, beat us up, and then when we start knocking people out. So let's just say we knock somebody out and they still don't respect you. As soon as I got the first championship, I was done. <laughs> I was thinking about, hey, I'm done. <laughs> I got a lot of money. Let me invest in the team. Let me do something else. I get home with the baby with Sharif and all them, and we watching. Uh, ESPN and they disrespect me. Oh, they got a championship. Can they do it again? Are they a dynasty? They're not a dynasty. So now I'm mad going through summer. All right, let me go and get one more. One more. Same thing. Oh, well, Magic and Kareem, they're still the best duo. And now they got a three peat. I'm like, so let me go and do it again. And then we lost one year. And then I called in Call and, and Gary created that super team and we made it to the finals. And then we didn't win. So and then so at three, I was like, you know what, I'm good. I'm gonna go on and just play my career out. And then they disrespect me again, <laughs> trade me. So I go in the office and I flex my power again. I said, okay, you want to trade me? But I'm going to Miami. No, we want. No, 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 no. It ain't gonna work like that. I'm going to Miami. Yeah. Why you wanna go to Miami? Don't worry about it. You 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 can trade me. It's done. This is his team. Y'all can have it. I appreciate you. Love you. Boom, boom, boom. I'm going to Miami. Because I saw something in D-Wade. I saw like a mixture of Penny and uh, uh, Kobe. Yeah. But he ain't had no help with him. Right. So you get me down there with him getting double, triple team, and that's going to open it up for him. So that was my envision. And then, uh, you know, I, I called up a few of the homies. Hey, Pose, I need you. GP. Antoine, what's up, Walking. dog? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they disrespect us. So it was a bunch of a bunch of old has-beens that we had put together, and that was that was good. And then after I got the fourth one again, oh Kobe got four, again. oh Kobe got five. So I admit, my last couple of years I was ring chasing just to get five. But yeah. then when I had that career in the injury, I was like, it's it's over for me because yeah. I didn't feel right averaging eight nine points. That, that ain't yeah. me. Like I have to give it up to Dwight. He's really playing good, but I can't do that. I can't be averaging those six seven yeah. points. And the situation with Penny and the situation with Kobe, did that prepare you for the situation with D Wade? I was like, tired of it. Yeah. So when I when I got to Miami I just gave it up. Yeah. So it's your team though. Yeah. It's your team. Your team, I'm the big advisor, I'm following you. Yeah. So you just you just get tired of it because you realize that in the long run it's a useless title. It's your team. What does that mean? Right. Yeah. You the man. What does that mean? Ego. Don't mean yeah. nothing. Yeah. Right? It don't mean nothing. So I was like, here, man. So I told him problems that happened with me and Penny, problems that happened with me and Cole. I said, that's could never happen with me and you. Yeah. It's your shit. I'm going to sit back. Speaking on them three guys, right? I had a thing. I was thinking about it yesterday, and I'm like, yo, I got to ask you. So we do start, bench, cut, right? So I want you to tell me who you start, bench, cut between these three duos. You and Penny, you and Cole, <laughs> or you and D-Wade? Start bench cut. I know what I would do, but I just want to hear from the man himself that was that was, that was was there. You know how Cameron said, you wasn't think, there, you was there. I think Penny would understand this. Just looking at wins and rings. Yeah, what's your win with? So I got three with Kobe, so you got to start him. Mm-hmm. I got one with D-Wade, he coming off the bench. Me and Penny had the opportunity to get one, but we couldn't get it one, so I got to cut Penny. But that's no disrespect to neither one of those guys, because I, I I love playing with all those guys. But to mm-hmm. answer this little silly game that y'all put me in that I know gonna go viral, <laughs> I, I just want to let you know, Penny, I'm not disrespecting you. I'm just playing the game. But based on that championship winning criteria, it has to be like that. Do you feel like uh, Magic is the best Laker ever? No, they say Kobe is. So, I say Kobe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, like you know, it has to be years. twenty years. All the records. Again, like you have to, you have to base it on what you're looking at. Yeah. You know, Magic is probably the nicest Laker besides me. Yeah. But when it comes to the overall love and overall, uh, you know, great stuff has been done. 
Like Kobe has a lot of game winners, a lot of moments. So <laughs> probably him. I feel like and you. A lot and of people. No, okay. I never wanted to be the best. That's what y'all don't understand about me. I know you don't want to be the best, but I no, feel like I with you and Kobe, y'all one of the best duos ever no, to be created. No, if not, not one of the best, best duo. Not one of the best. The best, most enigmatic duo ever created. I, big big Little, because there's a lot of duos, but Big, big little. little. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, the Big, big Little, they, 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 the they bar nine. Best duo, yeah, best, best duo I, I definitely agree with that. But people but, don't need to understand about my game. I don't even want to be the best. That's, that's, not, that's not what I want to do. I want to intimidate you, make you quit, elbow you in your face, draw blood, and win championships. I'm not trying to, like, being the best is too much work. I do what I had to do to get the job done. See yeah. what I'm saying? I often refer, like, people could say whatever best. I refer to you as the most dominant. It's no, like you said, it's no disrespect to Bill Russell, to, to Will, to I Kareem, and none of them. But I just feel like I played against you in your prime and knew how strong you were. I feel like. I don't give a damn what none of them was doing. When you turned and put that thing on them, it ain't nothing they could oh, do. Everybody gonna break go. or fall at that oh. wheel. It ain't like <laughs> once you drop anchor, it's a, it's a wrap. I argue with my friends all the time and I be like, yeah, I know Akeem, a lot of people will say Akeem had a better series than you when y'all right. played him in the it finals did. early then. But I was like, that Akeem Olajuwon guarding the Lakers shack oh, yeah, is they, two different they, players. They're two different players. <laughs> and I was like, the Lakers shack was so fucking dominant, it was like, once you get your whole team get beat up by you, if we happen to be close, Kobe will end it for us. Right. So it was like, it's crazy. Like for you, always my favorite center. I appreciate best that. center center ever I ever seen, and so just dominant. Just your attitude because you were so good off the court, personality wise. Like you showed so much love to guys like us because we was Clippers. Like you know what I'm saying, and we won the the most popular or nothing like that when we got in. As soon as we met you, you showed us love. But you were so vicious when it came to between the lines. Like, how can you switch that up? Family. They giving this money away, <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm going to get it. When I came in, I was like, okay, because believe it or not, I wanted to be Garnett. I got all y'all. Y'all see me take a coat. I got all that. I wanted to fade up, <laughs> shoot three, want to do all that. But when I'm playing Patrick Ewing, I go like this, and he move. I'm like, oh. We have something here. Mm -hmm. I go against Robinson and I do that, and they and they fly. I'm like, oh, okay, uh huh. They don't like that funk. Yeah. Like, let me, let me, let me uh, establish this. Let me, just let me do this. And but look, I wanted to fade away and cross people up. And matter of fact, I crossed your boy up one time. Oluwai. Uh, yeah, Oluwai. Remember that guy? Yeah, I got that yes. high cross on the him baseline. Up. On the baseline. Yes. So like, I wanted to do that the whole game, but that was my niche, just to you know beat beat people up. And again, I wasn't trying to be the best, I was just trying to win. When we first got to Clippers, they showed us this tape the year before. <laughs> I think you had like 60. On your birthday. Yes, on, on my Keith, birthday. On your birthday, yes. on Keith Clark's yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. So when we looking at the game, we like, we playing the Lakers this year, we like, oh shit, this motherfucker just, he ain't shoot no threes, he ain't no jumpers. You know, you, you know what happened? So I get there and I say, hey man, I need 10 tickets. Oh, you gotta pay. Cause it was the Clippers home game. I said, man, this motherfucker empty, man. <laughs> I said, all right, no problem. They 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 tried me like ten stacks. Man, I was so mad. I told Kobe, and I said, ain't nobody shooting with me. And then another thing that made me bad. A lot of people don't know this. Kareem was your assistant coach. Ah. Every time I touched the ball, he put his head down. Cause I remember one time I got the ball. I'm like, oh shit, Kareem looking at me. I'm about to hit him with the sky hook and point at him, let him know I'm loving. Him. Motherfucker put his head down though, like this the whole time. So I did a little jump hook, so I, you know, I got the rebound. Like, every time I was down there, he put his head down. So I was like, oh, Kareem don't know my name. <laughs> he don't know my name, but he gonna know it tonight. So like, I'm I'm a real sensitive guy, but again, I don't get mad, I just get even. Because when, whenever you say I can't do something, I'm gonna just go prove, do it. Prove That's wrong. it, yeah. So do, I wanna ask you this, do you remember? Pulling you over? Not pulling, oh, that okay. too, but yeah. New Year's Eve, we came to your crib. And this was in what, Beverly Hills, right? Yeah. And I don't even remember how we even bumped into you, but then like like you like, said, you, the crib. You, you were showing love, like, come we go to the crib, we like, yo, we had shot crib, like. We see and Miss I, School in there. Yeah, job. Miss School was there. I'll never forget, you had a pocket full of money, your homeboy, we was all in there like, 
First of all, you had freaking movies that was like was private homemade movie right. that you oh, made with your homeboy yeah, yeah. at the crib in Orlando yeah, with the yeah, afro yeah. and you flipping the all the hills with ninjas and stuff, yeah. dog. They had, you had a, I'm like, what the hell? You had literally like yeah. a whole personal like movie. So whatever, we watching that. But your, one of your homeboys, uh, I can't remember his name, Spanish dude, you bet him had a bottle of, brand new bottle of the orange. I was like, I bet you can't drink that. All that right there. Yeah, he drunk it. Man, turned that thing upside down and didn't stop till he was done. And you gave him the money. About 15 minutes later, he was faded, but yeah, he, he was, was he, faded. he was live. He did it, and I was like, I can't believe this. But I was like, I I, I always remember, like, like he said, you showed us major love. And for us, like, we like, we 18, 19, like, man, we hanging with Shaq. Like, bro, I can't, we trying to call all our homeboys, notify them, like, we with him. Like, he talking, he calling us our name and stuff, <laughs> like. Because what y'all didn't understand is that y'all were me. And I see a lot of big time cats that, that don't show no love. I never wanted to be like that. Yeah. Look, so we up. all from the hood. We all got brothers, we all got cousins. Yeah. We all done seen some shit we ain't supposed to see at that age. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right, so. I ain't want to be that guy. So whenever I saw y'all, I just always had to show y'all love. Yeah, like, like because one, I like how y'all play. Like y'all always play like y'all wasn't scared, which I really like. You know, respect that. Yeah. Like y'all wasn't gonna stop old boy, but he wasn't gonna stop y'all either. And that's why. And that's why every time I play against y'all, like yo man, go to work, man. Stop messing around. <laughs> yeah. Burn it up. And coach want me to double. I ain't double. Kill his ass. Go, <laughs> go at him. So. Yeah. Like you always say, like. Too like I never wanted to be the asshole. Like you look up to somebody and you finally get the opportunity to meet the person that yeah, you look nah, up and they I'm just like be that. a total fucking nah, asshole. Like, I, I, I can't ever do that to y'all. Nah, I gotta give you love yeah. on that because to a man, not just us, but damn that everybody, everybody we meet when we talk about you, like you definitely are the the that that picture <laughs> of like man when when Mars meets you, it's the way you want it to be. You don't want it to be like this dude, an asshole, and he a sucker. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, Thank big you. fella, show love to everybody, and it's always, you know what I'm saying, reciprocated. Because everybody we talk to is like, man, everybody got a story. And that's what you want it to be like that. Like, D saying, like, we, I try and go out of my way to be cool with everybody all the time. Clearly, we ain't on a level nowhere near with you, but like, Everybody we talk to like got a dope story about when they first met Shaq and it ain't no weak shit and you don't never want it to be that. So that's a big salute right Appreciate there. It. Right right now, I know you and seen I wear that. I drink a job, but y'all got them cameras on. I'm a role model. <laughs> I know you, you Chuck, he's a role model. You seen with us, like you you remember the time where did nobody wear clipper jerseys, when nobody even going to the games and uh we got the opportunity to get drafted there and uh, we created a little buzz even though y'all was winning every championship <laughs> back to back to back. To see the Clippers where they at now to for players to really want to go there and trying to change the culture and just bring a second team to LA. Like, What do you think about from the time we kind of got there to now you actually see kids and players with Clippers jerseys? It's actually interesting to hear them start to change the conversation. Like you hear people say now, nah, if the Clippers win, yeah. It'll be a Clipper time. Right. Me, me and him fight over that all the time, my boy, because he like the Lakers. So it, it, it just means that you guys have a super respectable team. Yeah. Because y'all were making noise. Y'all were making noise to the point to where if we didn't pay attention, y'all would beat us. Yeah. And we couldn't have that. Yeah. So That was like, our Super Bowl every year. So, like, a, a lot of teams I admit we played on, I, you go to work. But, like, I had to, like, like, listen, man, we can't lose to the Clippers. Yeah. You know, like, ever. <laughs> so, but now... Now y'all 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 really have a chance to you know make some, and then Doc came in and put his foot down when it's a home game we he coming up the Lakers. I'm telling him yeah, and Balmer yeah. changed the whole aesthetic. So, because it don't even we used look to like always like have to yeah, be yeah, stretching, yeah, and don't, looking at y'all jerseys yeah. and stuff like this ain't our home <laughs> damn game. Y'all got pictures in the yeah. hallway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One year we beat y'all. We celebrate like we won the championship. We did beat y'all there. You drinking? Stop it. No, we won. No, you won. Stop it. Maggette had a good game against Corey Cole. Corey had like 28 oh, yeah. on him. I had a good on, game. On, I had a good first Cole. half. Who was he playing? Had, yeah, he had a half, had a half court, court on y'all. Who was playing? Was I playing? Yeah, yeah it was on y'all home I, court. I wasn't playing. He was in foul trouble. Stop it. For, against who? Ola Kawande? Nah, not against Oh, hell no. Nah. <laughs> Man, I don't even try to nah. No way. <laughs> I want to talk to you about, about your son, Sharif, right? Cause as a parent, you know we we all got kids and stuff. My kids aren't as old, but you know we all wish that our kids play basketball and go, you know, be like us, do what we did and can make it to the NBA. For you to have a son as you know, what I'm saying as good as your son as, like, how is it to be you 
to to you know what I'm saying be able to go to games and support your son and then have him you know deal with what he's dealt with at such a young age going through the the heart surgery and now you know leaving UCLA and, and doing his thing how was it for you to support that and and to watch him go on his journey so I tell all my kids all the time six of them so we don't need another basketball player I like to have a surgeon a businesswoman <laughs> the next Oprah yeah you know, fashion line, whatever. So I don't put pressure on them to play basketball. Rule in my house is you have to have two degrees to touch some of my cheese. So I don't put pressure oh. on them. So when I was I raising like that. So when I was raising Say that them, again for the people in the back. You gotta have two degree two degrees to touch some of my cheese. So my my, my kids better my, be listening. My wife, I don't believe in ex wife, she's still my wife. Yeah. My wife is pretty tall. So I figured the baby was gonna be about six nine. So now I'm training Sharif and Shakir, like my favorite players at the time, Kobe, T-Mac, Grant Hill. So they're really guards. Yeah. I'm like, we, I ain't, we ain't doing no drop step. Shoot, Steve Smith, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching them all that, right? Yeah. And then, hey, go over there with your uncle, un- Uncle Quentin, he gonna teach them. Go over there with your uncle T-Mac, they gonna teach them. So they got a lot of knowledge from a lot of people. Now they, but they have the guard ability, which is good because in this era, big that's guys ain't playing anyway. Plan. So he, he, Sharif and Shakir, they they work. Yeah, I don't have to. I don't have to mess with them. I don't have to yell at them. They work. And the most important thing I said, you ain't gonna beat me. I don't want you to beat me. Yeah. Be yourself. Yeah. Despite what they say or what every time they don't beat me. Yeah. Because this is a true story. I had forty five one time in high school. Three quarters left. Playing against some little guys, I'm I'm supposed to be dunking. I'm not dunking. I don't want to dunk. I want to. Uh, so I lay it up, finger roll and miss. My dad walked on the court and the drill sergeant. I said, "Yo, man, you call the timeout." I call the timeout. I go outside. He said, "Yo, man, what you doing?" I said, "Man, you know I'm working on my Dr. J Magic shit." Wow, wow, <laughs> smack me. <laughs> nah, ain't no Magic Dr. J. You Shaq, be Shaq. And that's when I, and. That's why every time I dunk, I try to rip the rim off because it was because I was mad at him. Like yeah. you did, though, yeah, like several did. times. So so when I dunk, when I start dunking like that, and everybody start doing that, I was like, oh, we have something here. Boom, boom, boom. They don't like that. They don't like when I bump. So I, I tell my baby all the time, look, man, you ain't got to be like me. Be yourself. Make a name for yourself. So when he had the when he had the heart surgery, it was it was tough. But before I had a conversation with him, I had a, I had a, uh, I had I had to do my own research. So it was three doctors that could fix it, and one had a damn near perfect record, Stanford. So I met with him, said, hey man, what's happening? And he was smooth, white guy from Boston. He's like, Shaq, I got you, don't even worry about it. I'm the Larry Bird of these surgeries. So like, he, <laughs> like, you know, he knew what to say. Yeah, he's like, I'm good, I'm 98, don't even worry about it. So, but I'm, I'm messing with him, what about this guy? Nah, man, that's the old way, we not, what about it? We not, Shaq, I got you. Yeah. So on the surgery, so. But you know, my son on social media, you know how kids, they read stuff yeah. like people tell them, oh, you ain't gonna make it, you ain't gonna make it. So right before he go in, he was kind of nervous. Had so, to be. So I had to, tell him, I had to tell him like a little homeboy story. I said, hey man, you about to go in there? It's this nurse named Anesthesia. She fine in the mom. Like, <laughs> she is so fine. What do you mean? I said, she cold. She cold. So I, after, you know, we got over that and I said, when you wake up, I'm gonna be the first one there. Yeah. Don't worry about it. So when he woke up, me and his mom was there. So I said, see? Now the shit's over, now we don't think about it. Now you take your little three months off and then we get back to work. So you're working, you're working. When's the first time you broke a rim, like just completely dismantled something that was a real structure? Not like a, you know, the same a day my father, The same day my father smacked me. <laughs> that day? Yeah, broke you remember it. in high school they didn't have them break away. Right, that's what one, I'm saying. Yeah, so like, I, I broke no, you pretty much re, yeah. reconfigured the whole yeah. basketball <laughs> structure yeah. situation. You and then, made him rethink it. <laughs> and then my dad was sort of like me, so after he punched me, and I'm, I ain't crying, but I got a tear in my eye, I break the rim and I look at him, he don't smile or nothing. So he ain't hype enough. No, he just, he just look at me like. Posed to that. Yeah, like, yeah, like he's posed to that. So the next game, he there, I'm like, oh, okay. You ain't like that? What about this one? Yeah. Oh, this one. Like he, first time he told me good game was after my first championship. Because mm. he was, he loved the game. He wanted perfection. So if I had 50 points, he'd be like, you should have had 60. You missed 10 free throws. You missed 10 free throws, yeah. I don't want to hear that shit. I mean, that's what I look at now. Good. When you I look at click. when I you look at big fellas, when I look at big dudes, when I was coming through, I'm you was the bar. 
I always knew how it felt when I when I come down and try and double or swipe of the ball and this motherfucker got the ball like nah watch your whole everything. Yes. So like when I played that 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 was the that was the whole Not standard you though, that I yeah, kept but everybody. I wasn't gonna touch you up. No, I'm just saying, but yeah, I, I seen you do it, so oh, it was yeah. in my mind. Like of course. regardless yeah. of what you was gonna do it to me, I was aware, yeah. like, hold on, I saw such and such come down there and get his whole shit tore up. Like, I'm not trying to be that person. Like, right. good that you rock with me, but like still, that was in my mind, like, nah. And when you see that's why when I talk about a lot of the people I talk about, when you see people that you know supposed to do a certain thing, bro, I need to see it done. Now you for real like <laughs> Want you all, yeah, I want y'all to see that I don't be drinking when that camera's rolling. <laughs> but for me, like you was for real, like Thanos wasn't out back then, but you was Thanos. Thank you, you was what it was supposed to be when you saw this big massive Dominate. physique chisel action figure. But then also once you got the I ball. I used to it, be chisel, right? I ain't chisel no more though. But no, look, it was chisel. but it was for real, like yeah. it was for real, like the first time we met you was when we played the we played them. Remember we saw him in the weight room in the Staples Center, and I was like, "God damn!" He that like, motherfucker. So I was standing there. He was like, "How y'all doing?" He was like, "Y'all good." He was like, "You was cool and right. shit," but it was like for real. Like that's the truth. Like when you see the Avengers and you look at Thanos, how he destroyed every Avenger by themselves one on one. It took a whole group, but like that's what when you see people like you, that's what I want to see. Me and too. when I don't see it, oh, yeah, I'm it disappointed. It makes me mad. Yeah, like nah, I don't. I'm not. I'm like I don't care if you still an all star. I don't care if you still one of the best. Like you, not what you supposed to be. And I hate when people say because I, I read what Joel and B said. Shaq, I like you and Chuck, but we don't play the game like that no more. Why not? Because that's why. Because you won't. If you play like that, nobody can't do a damn thing with you, big fella. And you gonna change the game again. Let me ask you because like. You you made a living off selling motherfuckers right under the basket, turning dunk. I never see kids or these big guys seal nobody under the basket no more. Even if they way bigger it. and stronger, I don't like understand I it. like and it was I a nightmare if the big man went back. You see it. I could look at a guy and tell who's happy to be here, who wants to be good, mm -hmm. who wants to be great. And who wants to be the best ever? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We I, I could see yeah, that shit. I, I, you I can look see at you it. and tell. I yeah. can look at you and tell. Why yeah. is long enough some people, disappearing? Some people just like having the hype of being a good player. Yeah. That, that wasn't good enough for me. That wasn't good enough for me. I remember this. I don't know if you remember this, but we played you in preseason when I got traded from the Clippers to the Cavs. And um, every every year you'd be like, man, hey, D keep up the good work, D-Miles. I like the way you're playing. You're getting better and better every year. And we played you preseason, and I didn't rehab as good. I didn't have the lift I have or the speed I have. And you instantly called it out. It was like, uh-uh, there's something wrong with you. Yeah, there's something like, wrong with you. You ain't, you ain't the same player you ain't. that you was last year. I you know was the you. first player, like, out, you was the first person outside of a coach or anybody to point it out and be like that. And, and I felt it like, he's it's, right. Like, I don't feel it's only, it's only 20 people that I cared about in the NBA. Yeah. A lot of youngsters. I love white chocolate. Yeah. yeah, that's the dude. White Chocolate, GP, Vince, T Mac, U2, Grand Hill. That's about it. Everybody I didn't really care about. It was, it was just, you know, it was, it was just something about those names that I just mentioned. Whether they were cool or just, you know. Speak, speaking on that, I can legit remember two instances with you saying that how you rock with us. I remember, like, I remember the first game we played you. I don't even remember where you, you might have been in Miami I then. Oh, you had freckles, old cute ass little boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got freckles. Yeah, man, freckles. listen, damn. Freckles, damn. <laughs> he be using makeup, he be yeah, makeup. You, man, put, listen. you got them girls and use makeup. But no, I remember this cute ass little boy face, little. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, fucking beautiful over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. But so this was the first time we played. I want to say you was with the Heat then, because this was when I was with the. This was the first time after my brother got killed, and I remember we was in the um, we was in the warm ups, and you was like, you came to me like, you know, you called me over there to have court, like, hey, and you was like, your family cool? You like everybody cool? And you was like, and I was like, yeah, man, you know, we kind of dealing with it. He was like, they already got him. <laughs> he was yeah. like. He was like, no, nah, no, nah, fuck that. You know, we eye for eye over here. He was like, they already got them? I was like, yeah, man, they already already arrested and everything. He was like, all right. He was like, all right. I was like, <laughs> family, dog. I'll family. never I'll never forget that. Dead ass. And then the second thing, I don't know if you remember this. 
This was 05 in Denver at the All-Star game when I won a three-point contest, right? So you remember, you and, you and Shawnee was sitting right there. Right. So I remember this like, yeah, I'll never, ever forget this. Because a couple of weeks, about a month ago or so, somebody posted the, the little clip. And, you know, I made my last nine in a row. Right. So y'all, you and her were sitting right there on the bend of the elbow. So after I got through with the rack before the last, I got to the corner, y'all was right there. So... I missed the first one on the on on the second to last rack. Then I made the last nine straight. So I thought I made about two, three, and I was coming around this way. I started shooting. Now you right behind me. Every time I pull, all I can hear behind me was Yakup, Yakup, Yakup. I swear to God, I was, I was like, and it was like it was weird because yeah. you know, like in those moments, like I'm, I felt like I was in the zone. It was like yeah. I can't really hear shit else. Oh, look around, the crowd or nothing ain't going, is. but. I hear you right there, Yakum, Yakum. I said, yo, I'll never forget that shit. Like Shaq was right there. You had the hat on. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yo, that's crazy. Movies, like you, you got. I had the opportunity to do a couple yeah, of movies. movies in my... <laughs> you talking about my shit was terrible. <laughs> This shit was. I mean, I I felt that game I felt, was I felt terrible I, in that movie, boy. I, really I came felt I did sell my shit. I nah. felt I did sell my shit. I forgot. I did sell. Hey, look, that's the coldest <laughs> part, though. He was in the movie with, look, he was in the movie with Captain America, Black Widow. All of them was in that movie before they blew up. They, after that movie, I said, damn. I'm supposed to be a superhero. Too. I, I said, where, 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 your, where your goddamn Avengers rolling? Everybody in your movie went look, big li- time li- except li- him. Living in LA, you get those opportunities. I ain't saying no to them opportunities. I didn't say no to them. Look, I, did, I never wanted to do a rap album. So when I first did Arsenio Hall, I said, I got to do something different. I'm different. So just let me rap with my favorite rap group. And we, I rap with the Foo Snickers. The next Foo day, Snickers. my office said, we want to give you a, a record deal. <laughs> I was like, we'll give you 10 million your first record. I said, I don't think I could do a record by myself. We'll get anybody you want. Anybody? <laughs> so that's when I said, okay, I can do albums, but it ain't going to be me. I'm a Big E, Quick, Snoop. That's why I did all those albums. That's why I wanted pain. to ask you. Yeah, like, Bro, I, I couldn't like, imagine just like, being there. You sitting there, it just come yeah. to you like, I don't rap. You like, they like 10 mil. They like, we'll get anybody. You like, oh, let's do it. Let's do it. I had your album. You used to all listen to it. I used you to can't play, stop the I rain. Still Shaq one of, I don't give a care if you rap or not. That's still thank, one of the dopest. Thank you, like, that's a, that's for, for a hooper. That's one. Man. I used Please, to play Shaq Fu on on Nintendo all the time and listen to the album. One of my favorite artists is Biggie. Oh, yeah. To do a song with Biggie. Like one of arguably the best and rapper a, ever a to do a song, song with him, and and one of the dopest songs ever still ring to this day. Straight right. up, tell us about the process of that. So the process is we get him on the phone because I, he said, I, I'm doing brothers like Shaquille. Shit is yeah, real, yeah. right? So I, I was like, ooh, he, he knows. <laughs> and then he knows. So I called him. I called Puff. I said, Puff, me. I said, Big, I'm doing an album. He said, Yeah, I, I heard you spit Big Fella. We can do it. So I sent him the beat. And uh, never responded. So then Puff called and said, hey, Big E and Lil C, they flying down today. But prior to that, I was I did my verse over like 10 times because yeah. I wanted to be, like, I, 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 I'm not that good to be in the studio with him. Let me just get mine out the way. And let just, him hear it. Just hope, yeah, just hope he like it. So, yeah, so I had Peter with me, and everybody heard it, and everybody said, yeah, that's dope. He going to like that. So when he get there, because I had the studio in the house, I let him hear it. He's like, that's tight, that's tight. So I hand him a, a pad and a pen. But you know, they was gonna be doing their thing in the studio, you know what I'm talking about. I, I can't be a part of that. So I said, uh, here's your pad, your pen. Just hit this button, I'm being here. And just let me know you're ready. He's like, I'm ready now. <laughs> like, what you mean you're ready now? He said, I'm ready now. Bro, one take, killed it. <laughs> like, I ain't never, I, listen, I don't, him, Jay-Z, and Nas are the only people to do that. Everybody else, they, you know, they, they, they do what they do. Three minutes, nailed it, but it was too. It was it was it, 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 it was too street. Yeah, and we we played about five times. I looked at him. He's like, "What's wrong?" I was like, "Big." He's like, "That's right, the kids. My bad, Diesel." And then he went back and laid the other verse. So I'm the only one that got the original. What the it real. said, and yeah. I ain't gonna ever release it. I got it. I, yeah. I, I, I bump it all the time. That's you a, had but a listen, song. he he went off. Yeah, went off. That's and something like, hip hop heads are probably yeah, lose their mind. He for. went off, and I was like. He's like, what's wrong? I was like, big. He said, that's right, these are my bad kids, kids. And yeah, so you listen man. to the real version whenever you want all to. All the time, yeah, all the time. You had a song to your father on your on that album. Yeah. And I used to listen to that song all the time because I had my daddy. You had a video to it and all that stuff. 
what was inspired by that song? Like, like I know it's your father, but like how deep so my, you wanted to put that out to put it in words. The guy that made me who I am was my stepfather. So then my real father came around. I ain't gonna talk about it now because me and my real father, we, we kind of made up. Yeah, but he time. came around and I'm like, bro, the world don't need to know that. Yeah. Now I got TMZ, all them, before they was in that, not only people all in my business. Right. Right, but my thing was from zero to 18, you weren't trying to holler, so don't try to holler now because I'm Shaq Diesel. Yeah. But anyway, so after my stepfather passed, my mom said, you need to get to know your real father. So we, we cool now. We yeah. talk. Yeah, I talk to him all the time. You got you to gotta grow, grow up. Like yeah, so I, I, I like. went to see him in Newark. I said, hey, man, come holler at me. He said, man, I'm 30 blocks away. You walking? So I had to, I, 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 we, we went to a spot, said, pick one out. Bought him a little crowd. Said, whenever I come in town, I call you, tell you come see me. Don't tell me you're walking. Yeah. So I bought him a little Jeep, sitting on some things. So he, he <laughs> rolling around Newark, and they know that's my pop, so they know not to mess with him. But we cool now. But at that time, I was like, bro, you ain't have to let the world know this. And then to pay homage to the guy that made me, I'm going to let the world know that he's, he's the one. Because without him, I wouldn't be here right now. I remember, I don't know if Q was with me, I don't know if we came over there with LeBron. I remember two stories of coming over your house in Orlando. The, 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 the mega house. I remember when we came over there Shaka and you was Polk like, call. Yes. yeah, you see them neighbors down there? I'm pulling up in their house with the Brinks truck and they gonna have to get out. Yeah, they, they gonna did. have to move yeah, they did. to build the house that you have. Yeah. I remember going over there and you had uh, Cause I was watching Godfather one day and was like, let's make them an offer they can't refuse. Yeah. So the house next to me was worth two something. Like I, I did all my research. Yeah. So I went over there like, I'll give you one five cash. Nope. I'll give you one seven cash. Nope. I'll give you two cash, nope. Two one cash, that's my final offer. Okay, all right, boom, get out, expand it. So, you know, at, at that time I had it. So I just wanted to make the bigger house. But when you're that young, you don't think. Like right, I only been there two days last year, so it's just sitting there collecting dust. So I, could, could I don't want to sell it. Could we night or something? Of like, course, we, you, you know, uh, I'm mad at you, what I do. Like we live five minutes from I there. I know that. Like yeah. let me come over and I spend the night that. or something. You know, I'll take care of it. I pulled up to the 7-Eleven, they was like, you just left. <laughs> like we need a gym to work out for. Like, I play in a big three. Bro, I know you got the Shack Center bro, there. You, I need a gym, me, like let me go work you, out you, or something. You, you call me the time. You know what I'm saying? I, I ain't gonna traffic play. I got kids, I know how to take care of stuff. I ain't gonna do you like that. I be at home bored by myself. I ain't got nobody I told you I didn't see, literally. You showed me the bed in that joint you got. I said, what the fuck is that? I saw him a few times, like you. Yeah, yeah, I, I First saw you of all, too. We gotta talk about the toys. You got more toys as a, as a big adult than anybody. Like I've seen lot. you one I, time. I, I, and what I is used it? to slingshot. Oh, yeah, I just seen you hit switches in like an old school. You finna get rid of your music shot? loud? Like, no. I heard you finna get rid of. No. And well, you want be, it? I be seeing yeah. D-Mac all the time. I see Cuz all the time. Yeah. Make me a price. You know, I bought the van for you. The van I, that you had to scream. Yeah, that's right. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you want the slingshot of yours, though. Yeah. When you come to the draft, you, you you see this man. A lot of people don't know his name until you get close to the draft, and his name is David Stern. You always know who this man is. Just tell you, tell us like some of the stories of the opportunity you got the chance to shake his hand to come into this league and to get to know him over your career of how good a person he was. I meet him before the draft. He says, even before the lottery, he said, you want to play where it's hot or where it's cold? And I said, hot. Then Orlando gets the ball. I don't think none of it. <laughs> I'm I, a conspiracy theorist. Yeah, everybody. I am too. So then, <laughs> I'm in. I love that you just said I'm that. I'm in. I'm, I'm, I'm at the draft, and he's coming up with the envelope. And uh, he's looking at the envelope, and he goes. <laughs> so I, that was then, a wink. If the yeah, cameras so, did not see it, that was yeah, a so, strong wink. So right then, because I, I, again, I didn't know if I, I know I was one, two, or three. Yeah. But I didn't know, so like he he got the envelope, and you know it was real quick. He was like, <laughs> and with the first, and then he called me. So, and then I would always see him and say thank you because he he actually paved the way for all of us. Absolutely, he did a lot. So I remember one time when 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 the hacker shack was starting to get strong, I went to his office and said, "Listen, I make a lot of money, and based on your pay scale, I can miss twenty games and still be all right." Yeah. So the next person found me. I'm knocking somebody's teeth out. And he started laughing. He said, Shaq, you know what's funny about this conversation? <laughs> he said, you're complaining about 28 teams, but I got 28 teams complaining about you. 
That's what he said. That's crazy. I said, damn. I said, so they switched. Perspective. I said, I said yeah, they complained about me. He said, yeah, everybody's, you're too big, you're too strong, you get all the call. Like, I can't. And then he said, let me keep it real, Shaq. I can't call every file. I said, you're right. And so that's when I said, okay, you can't call every file. That also means you can't call every three seconds. Right. And that's why I just stood in the lane. And that's how, and. This always and, was yeah, clogged, man. You that, always. All day, I'm gonna just stand, I'm like, you gonna call it, but you ain't gonna call it two times, three times wrong. Ain't no right. way, ain't no way you gonna do it. So I kind of just forgot about the hacker shack and, and said to myself, okay, if I can get past this and win, make me the most unstoppable big guy ever. Yeah, and I mean, for, for you in particular, I mean, it's a, you know, it's a handful of guys, individuals in the league, but somebody like you whose brand is so huge globally, I mean, he had to, like, like immediately impact that with him taking the game yeah, to China, was. everywhere he took it, and you big everywhere right after that. It's like he opened the doors and you stepped straight through, like, yeah, let me go ahead and slide up in here. And everybody yeah. obviously loves you, and your brand is unbelievably big. But I know he had to impact that directly with, with him opening the doors all over the world. Believe it or not, all the players before me, they weren't relatable to guys like us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was the guy that y'all were gonna relate to. Yeah. Cause even though I'm looking at Magic and Mike, they ain't like me. Uh, I don't know where they're from, but they're not like me. Right. Uh, right. Kareem ain't like me. Will ain't like me. Uh, right. So when I got the opportunity to be that guy, I was like, okay, let me pave the way for all these guys that's coming behind me, and that's all I tried to do. We had the opportunity to have Big Baby on our show. That's my boy. Big Baby said he had the opportunity to meet you when he was younger. And he flipped me. And he, and y'all was wrestling, <laughs> so he said he slapped you. Yeah, oh, he's strong as shit. <laughs> he flipped so me. Big the baby, dog, the baby it got is confirmed yeah. right yeah. here today. Yeah. He said yeah. he didn't even know what was going on. He yeah. said he just all excited to meet you and you, you squared up like, come on, like, yeah, like let's wrestle. And he yeah. was like, I am about to wrestle Shaq, I guess. Like, <laughs> he, <laughs> he said, then I, I got him. I got him for a second. <laughs> yeah. He flipped me. That was him. Shout out to the Bear Rilla, yeah, Big strong. Baby. How's he doing? He good? Oh yeah, he good. Big Baby, good man. We trying to get we trying to get his barbecue thing off the ground. We we what trying to. He got some barbecue sauce. Man, listen. Barbecue we, we, we trying we trying to get big somebody mess with his Big Baby barbecue uh, brand because uh, he's amazing. Uh, the man can cook and everything. You know he can. You come on, man. You seen him at the Is man that a restaurant. Nah, he trying to get somebody to the uh, rock with him. All right, Big Baby, I got a cooking show. We starting in March. This is this what on. we need to do, Big Baby. You I'm here, right you here, Baby big Barbecue. Fella. I'm gonna bring you on. Yeah. Uh, you you decide like you do a lot of things like uh, you, you're a cop. You got degrees. You're a Why are you snitching on, on on TV, man? How did that start? How's though? That, how's that how did that Everybody start though? Like you pulled us over in LA, bro, with flashing lights, bro. Everybody know you the popo, man. You twelve, however you want to call it, five zero. So when I was young, hearing that I wasn't gonna be a great basketball player. Mm -hmm. I would write down in alphabetical order what, what I wanted to be. A, a basketball player. B, basketball player. C, cop. D, detective. E, entrepreneur. Yeah. F, I don't know what F was. So, I, so these were all dreams. So towards the uh, latter part of my career when I'm f starting to feel old, I'm like, what am I going to do when I retire? Because you never know what you're going to do. Yeah. Like podcast wasn't out yet. Hell yeah. TNT wasn't really hiring. I didn't know what I'm going to do. I think I could be a sheriff. Yeah. Cause I can relate to us. I'm, I want to be the guy that brings law enforcement in the hood close yeah. together. I speak our language. See, a lot of people in that, yeah. a lot of people in that position don't speak our language. I speak. I know when I'm pulling up, who holding and who ain't holding. Yeah. I know when I'm pulling up, who really working the streets or who really working or not. Like I, I can see it because that that's what we've been seeing all our life. But I don't like people giving me stuff. Yeah. I want to earn everything I got. So while I was playing, I was at the uh, LA Sheriff's Academy. Yeah. And there's different levels. You got to go level three, level two, level one. Level one gives you full-fledged police status. You don't have to have anybody with you. So I'm a reserve in LA, and I was working. I was working the streets, working the neighborhood, talking to kids, going through the hood, doing stuff. Because when I'm done with everything, I will be sheriff somewhere. Yeah. Orlando, Georgia, Florida, I don't know. And yeah. I want the people that work for me to see I have the qualifications. Because sheriff is an elected position. Yeah. I'm sure I could win from being Shaq. Yeah. But now that I got the job, you want your people to respect you. Yeah. See, like for me to have a television radio crew like this, they already have to know that I have enough experience to say, all right, you put the camera there, you put the camera there, you put the camera there. 
don't buy that mic shit. Like they, they have to know, so they respect me. If I come and just say do a camera thing and let them do what they want, it's gonna be bullshit. So that's why I always wanted to be a cop. My my thing is like, stop when, telling people I pulled y'all over. I ain't pull you over. <laughs> <laughs> Did I give you a ticket? Hell no, nah, you ain't give me no ticket. I was late for practice. I was late for practice and got fired. Huh? I was late for practice and got fired. We did. try and go out the Lost Palmas, the gate. You know what I'm saying? And, but look, this before when you he used was to late do, for practice. when you used to be when you you get the title of a doctor, you put all this stuff on your resume. I never knew what was the meaning of it. But then as I got older, I'd be like, man, I want I want my resume to be filled up. As it's much for, as your resume is for y'all. You can look at this resume and be like, he's a doctor, he's a cop, he's I, a professional real athlete, doctor he's an like, entrepreneur, I, I, he's I, this I, and he's that. Y'all are younger than me, and I want to say y'all my kids disrespectfully, but I did it for y'all. Yeah. I did it for my kids. I want to be just, you know, I want people to say, hey, if he can do it, I can do it. Yeah. And all it takes is just get one or two people in that situation. And even now, like, I meet a lot of people, it actually makes me feel, oh, hey, man, when I was young, I did this. I met a guy one time and said, man, I was about to kill myself. And I met you, you was nice to me, you, you, you know, you, my mom was having problems buying something and you bought the furniture. And I was like, man, I wanna be like you. And he's a lawyer now, yeah. in Orlando. Now I feel that like, kid. for real, yeah. like a lot of the things, like you know, we come up, we grow up and see different things. And like, even when we was in the league, I used to always be like, damn, like Shaq, like my spirit animal or something. Like just, I'm serious, like just on a way, cause I feel like, to you know, one of the quotes that my sister, not a quote, but a, a scripture that my, that my sister would always quote is like, to whom much is given, much is required, right? So I always looked at that as like, we should be doing more and trying to help people and do that. And like, you, I feel like, I don't wanna say more than anybody, but as much as anybody that I could think of have always helped people from giving, you know, people that work from the team, buying them trucks or cars or just all type of stories from the things you do with the kids, with your charity, how you do the Shaka Claws, and you do it all over the country, not just here or there. Like, you have as good a time as the kids, getting the bikes as the kids, get, like you you get a kick out of that. And even in everything that's already, we know set it, stuff is set up and situated to do it, but you still bring your lust to it. You coming out your pocket, do this for a hundred dollars, I got a hundred dollars for you. You know what I'm saying? Just doing extras on top, which we know what that means to them kids. So for me, I just, man, like I say, you my spirit animal and Thank we you. need more like you, for real. My mom always taught me in riddles. She said, son, you were once a nobody. But now you're a somebody. But as a somebody, if you treat the regular man like a nobody, you will revert back to being a nobody. Uh-huh. That's strong right uh-huh. there. So I don't. Can you repeat that again? No, because I just <laughs> made it up. Oh. <laughs> uh, while I'm drinking this lovely, refreshing. Oh, it's too old. <sighs> huh? Hey, even if you no, made it up, that no, deal was no, no, you heavy. Were, you, you were once a nobody, but now you are somebody. But if you treat the regular people as a nobody, you will revert back to being a nobody. So I just want to make people smile. I want to be nice. I'm not, just because I make more money than you don't mean I'm better than you. Just because I'm bigger than you don't mean I'm harder than you. Because anybody could be touched, you know what I'm saying? Facts. So I'm all about peace. I don't want no problems. I don't just, hey, how you, what's up, my man? I show respect. Uh, I demand respect. And you know, you just have to be nice to me. Like the other day I was at the mall, I saw this beautiful sister with five babies and no coats. I was in a hurry. I damn near missed a meeting, but I couldn't do it. I was like, come on. She was like, what? She was like, I just need some money. I was like, no. Come on, lady. So I had to walk back in the mall, taking pictures. That's what I'm talking about right there. You know, she was like, like, this coat, I was like, don't worry about the coat. Just get two coats. I spent about 1300 but I I, I wouldn't have felt right getting in my car. And leaving them babies out. Yeah, I I couldn't do it. Like I said, we appreciate you. you. You coming with us, man. You the best center I ever seen Appreciate that. in my life. One of the best players I ever seen in my life. And it was nice drinking with just, y'all today. Thank hey, you. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Good libations, everybody. And thank you for being you. And tell, and your, and tell your, your, little lawyer, that, your little lawyer girl who tried to make me sign that paper, I ain't signing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> this is Shaq O'Neal, you're watching the Knuckleheads Podcast. Thank you for being you. Y'all heard Thank him. you for. But just everything, just always right. showing love to us. So slow down, man. You know what I'm saying? We got to show our, our love and appreciation, man, for the big dog. The back box. Coming through, oh, rocking with us. We got love. The black box. Slight merchandise. You know what I'm saying? Since he the one who originally started it, anyhow. Oh, the black box. Show, you feel me?
everybody eat, baby. That was y'all. And then, you know, we got our gracious sponsors, Mr. Hensy. We know you don't oh, do this. You, you, y'all you, got sponsors? You know what I'm saying? You're, you're, you're a role model. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They, 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 they gave you the special. This, this oh, that first part. This that XO. You know what I'm saying? XO means extra old. That ain't for you. You ain't extra old. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Got they got that, 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 that logo on that, Joe. That's exclusive with the, right there. With Not the ahead. big fella. I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? I will put this in my trophy cabinet. Thank right, you, thank you. There you go. Thank that you what y'all supposed to do, Hennessy. You know what I'm saying? We got the big dog. All right, love y'all, boy.